Good evening. There were winners and losers today as the government spelled out plans to put Birmingham at the heart of the country's high-speed rail network. Two new lines will slash journey times to Leeds and Manchester. They'll link to the HS2 line to London, although the network could take 20 years to complete. People who found out only today that the new routes will be close to their homes are already planning protests. But the Transport Minister says the new routes will make Birmingham the best connected city in the country, something that the business world has welcomed. Well, here's our transport correspondent, Peter Plisner. For the second time in three years, homeowners and businesses are tonight facing up to the fact that they'll be affected by HS2. The routes announced today mean more blight and more misery, this time in the north of the region. James Richards runs a riding stable near Curdworth in Warwickshire. He's already close to the original HS2 line. Now he and his horses are just yards away from the new route to Leeds. We're going to be sandwiched between two railway lines. Um, the access will be extremely difficult in and out of the stable yard. Elsewhere, lives are in limbo. This couple are desperate to sell, but the proximity of HS2 to their Staffordshire house has meant little interest from buyers concerned and upset about our future really and that, that we can't actually um, have any plans in life. Our life is just permanently on hold because of the blight on the property at the moment. But according to government ministers, while some might lose out, others will be winners with predictions of improved growth and prosperity. This is a huge announcement for the country and also for Birmingham. For the country it shows the commitment to build the infrastructure for the 21st century. For Birmingham it's going to mean jobs during the construction phase, new permanent jobs. And actually, thinking about it, for people of Birmingham, it's going to be the best connected city in the UK. Journey times between Birmingham and the north will be drastically reduced. Manchester, currently 1 hour 28, comes down to 41 minutes, while Leeds, currently 1 hour 58 minutes, drops to just 57 minutes. Behind me, the site of the proposed Birmingham City Centre HS2 station in Birmingham's east side. Here, there's already been quite a bit of regeneration, as you can see behind me. Manchester, Leeds and indeed Birmingham are hoping that when HS2 arrives, that will continue. And Birmingham's Chamber of Commerce maintains there's more to HS2 than just regeneration. The great thing is that it brings the cities closer and time and time again evidence will show you that when great cities can trade with each other, more business gets done collectively. What matters are the jobs, the rebalancing of, our, of the economy, this afternoon, prospects for HS2 were being debated by MPs in the Commons. The government plans a hybrid bill which could pave the way for high-speed lines to be built in two phases, London to Birmingham by 2026 and then Leeds and Manchester six years later. Peter Plisner, BBC Midlands Today. Well, the route that HS2 will take through Staffordshire was revealed at 7am this morning. Um, for many, it's come as an unpleasant surprise. The high-speed line will skirt around Stafford, but the nearby village of Hopton will have high-speed trains right on the doorstep. Further north of Maidley, near Newcastle under Lyme, it's a similar story, with trains hurtling through at up to 225 miles per hour. And with no HS2 stops in the county, will Staffordshire get all of the pain and none of the gain? Here's Liz Copper. In the village of Hopton, near Stafford, families greeted news they're on the HS2 route with shock. June Brand Bullivant chose her home partly because of its stunning views across the Staffordshire countryside. But HS2 is likely to change the view from here. It probably may not be in my lifetime when it is built, but we will fight for future people who will be living here at Hopton. Staffordshire will be affected from north to south by this route. The line's expected to pass close to the county showground here, one of many parts of the landscape likely to be affected. Amongst those areas will be Maidley, near Newcastle under Lyme, also close to the planned route. At the village centre, there was scepticism over the benefits of the high-speed link to rural communities like this one. We get the pain, but none of the gain. And, our, you know, they're spending money. Who, who are they spending it for? Not for us. It could take a lot more traffic than it, than it does, the West Coast main line. So I just don't say, see the... What's the need to have something like that? I'd sooner the money be spent on other things than, than that. I feel really sorry for people who are going to have their lives completely wrecked by it, but this is progress. The route north from Birmingham to Manchester will cut through swathes of Staffordshire countryside. 
the Conservative-led County Council says the environmental impact will be significant. It's the communities that are affected, who suddenly, people who suddenly have property blight, just like that. You know, the, 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 the house one day was worth X amount and now it's worth 50% less. You know, and those people really haven't been covered for compensation yet. And we need to work with those people to help them through their lives. Staffordshire's long had an association with the railways, but passengers here won't have a high-speed station. And there are many who feel the economic benefits of the route will be distant. Liz Copper, BBC Midlands Today, Staffordshire. Well, our transport correspondent Peter Plisner joins us now from those stables in Warwickshire, which we saw earlier in his report, which are threatened by HS2. Um, Peter, the devil really in the detail with these routes published today, isn't it? Certainly is, Sarah, and uh, these stables are uh, affected by not one but two HS2 lines and uh, may have to relocate. But key questions still remain tonight, and one of them is what compensation is available to those who find themselves affected? To find the answers, I'm joined by uh, Mark Bentley from estate agent Paul Cars. Um, first, tell me, I mean, what compensation is available immediately to people who find themselves affected? Immediately right now the scheme is threefold. For those within 60 metres of the line there is the advanced purchase scheme where they can be compulsory purchased and they get a 10% loss of payment payment on top of the value of their property so they're okay. 60 metres out, 120 metres out it's a voluntary purchase scheme. They can apply to be, uh, for the property to be purchased but they only get the value of the property, they don't get any cost paid and beyond 120 metres it's the exceptional hardship scheme. Now, the exceptional hardship scheme is pretty hard to actually claim, isn't it, from what yeah, I can gather? The, it is, and the, 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 the clue really is on that first side, the exceptional hardship scheme. You have to prove that you've tried to sell your property through every means you possibly can, and that you need to sell your property right now. You're in financial difficulty, you need to move because of a job move, you've got health issues, etc. You have to be in exceptional hardship. But general compensation isn't really available until compulsory purchase orders uh, come out, and that won't happen until after the hybrid bill passes through Parliament. That's absolutely right, and even now they've given the routes, they've given the safeguarding zones but it's still out for consultation and not even until the spring will you be able to start considering compulsory purchase let alone moving on to the hardship etc. How bad is the blight? I've heard that some houses are being devalued by up to £100,000. Uh, certainly those properties that are quite near obviously if you're very near the line that you end up getting full market value my experience of the hardship scheme I've had a lot of clients who've had success in the hardship scheme is the government are paying full market value if it's in the scheme but of course if it's in your in between when you're a third of a mile away and you're in between and you can't get the scheme then there is an argument that people are put off and buying. Mark many thanks well I have to say it is amazing to be talking about a railway line that could be 20 years away. Peter, thank you very much. And uh, we'd like to know what you think of the proposed new route for HS2. Please get in touch with us. We'll be reading out some of your comments later on before the end of the programme. Well, coming up later in the programme, the perils...